Isotope geochemistry, or isotope geology, has undoubtedly been the greatest single revolution in Earth sciences and one of the most important scientific revolutions of the 20th century. The ability to calculate precise absolute ages for different rocks brought Earth science into the realm of quantitative science, rather than purely descriptive. In this video, I'll detail the early development of the basic techniques used, and the improvements of age estimations for the Earth as scientific investigation progressed. The first attempt to calculate the age of the Earth made use of genealogies in the Bible and produced an age of around 6,000 years. To many this seemed perfectly acceptable at a time when biblical truth was still considered absolute by the majority in the Western world. However, to early pioneers of geology, this age just does not hold up when compared to the geological evidence. In the 18th century, James Hutton, on observing the complex rock sequences of northern Scotland, was taken by the realisation of the immense time involved in forming obscure relationships in the rock strata, which he termed unconformities. He noted that the compositions and structures found in continental materials were the same as the rocks being laid down in present-day marine environments, invoking a long and complex geological history. From this, he developed the idea of uniformitarianism, an idea developed by geologists of the 19th and 20th centuries, in particular Charles Lyell, a friend of Charles Darwin, Uniformitarianism is a naturalistic philosophy which states that the processes we see operating today operated in the past to create the geological record and necessitates that the Earth and Universe are both extremely old. This is in contrast to biblically based catastrophism, which is the philosophy that the geological record was constructed by periodic catastrophic depositional events interspersed by relative tranquility. It is important to realise, however, Modern geologists do not adhere to strict uniformitarianism as a guiding principle, as many processes are now known to have operated in the past, which no longer occur, still occur but at very different rates, or only occur on timescales beyond recorded observations. Examples of such processes are the deposition of banded iron formations, the eruption of comatiites, and supervolcanic eruptions. A combination of both uniformitarianism and catastrophism is therefore a more accurate way of looking at both the Earth and the universe, although with a balance heavily swayed towards uniformitarianism. Using modern ideas of uniformitarianism, more rigorous attempts were made to calculate the age of the Earth. Lord Kelvin famously calculated an age of 100 million years, assuming the Sun and Earth had been cooling at a constant rate since their formation. John Jolly calculated a similar age, based on the false assumption that salt in the ocean was derived from a constant riverine input. Despite these new ages being considerably older than the original biblical age, they still contradicted the geological evidence, which required much greater timescales. However, the calculation of Lord Kelvin seemed faultless. This was a major blow to the modern geologist's view of the Earth. The solution, however, was both simple and elegant, and came following the pioneering work of Becquerel, Curie and Rutherford. Following the discovery of radioactive decay by Becquerel in 1896, Curie found that the decay of uranium to lead releases a significant amount of heat energy per decay. This rendered the main assumption by Kelvin that the Earth had cooled constantly since its formation invalid, as a deep Earth contains significant amounts of uranium, the decay of which will have greatly slowed the cooling rate of the Earth. It was not only the heat released by the decay of uranium that proved important, however. As the physics of nuclear decay was investigated further, the rate at which many, but not all, isotopes decay was found to be a constant. This meant that measurements of the relative concentrations of different isotopes of the same element in material today could, in theory, provide a reliable record of geological time. With the discovery of isotope systems with half-lives, abundances, and chemical affinities relevant to geological systems, the application of the basic principles of nuclear decay to earth sciences began to take shape. Post-Second World War, Sophisticated mass spectrometers, the instrument used to distinguish between different isotopes of the same element, began to appear in geological laboratories, where before they were solely the tool of physicists. Early applications of each isotope system have since proved to be variably unreliable, as a complex geochemistry, petrogenesis and subsequent alteration of rocks has been shown to distort the relatively simple basis of geochronology. For example, whole rock uranium lead dating weathered rocks is not a reliable indicator of age, as uranium readily dissolves from rocks in oxidising conditions. Similarly, rubidium strontium ages have been deemed unreliable, 
due to the sensitivity of this particular isotope system to open system processes, such as magma contamination and hydrothermal alteration. These observed added complexities to radiometric dating are commonly discussed as a set of basic tenets or assumptions and are by the nature of science rigorously tested every time an apparent age is calculated. In some cases these assumptions prove to hold up, in others they fail spectacularly. Either way, as long as the analyses are reliable, a useful conclusion may be drawn. Overall, the reliability of dating techniques has progressed significantly with our understanding of geological systems and technological advances, and we now have a very powerful set of tools to unravel the ancient history of our planet and the solar system. Over the next few videos, I will go into greater detail into the points summarised in this brief introduction, starting with a look at what isotopes are and how they decay, before moving on to how different isotope systems are applied to geochronology. Thanks for watching.